Right now you're hearing the Rode Wireless Go and I'll be doing a sound test outdoors, an outdoor range test, and a signal obstruction test. Hey guys, thanks for stopping in. My name is Mark. The Rode Wireless Go, which you're hearing right now, is a really cool microphone. Tiny, has a built-in mic, and many other features you'd want and need, all for just $199. We'll first take a close look at the transmitter and receiver, then show you the test, during which I uncovered an important limitation that might deter you from buying it. So here's everything that comes with the set. You have the receiver, the transmitter, two furry windshields, a storage pouch, two charging cables, a cable to connect your receiver to your camera, and take a closer look at the receiver. On the side, we have a USB charging port, the port to connect your receiver to your camera, and on the bottom, you have a button to adjust the gain and a pairing button. And on the back, you have a clip, which you could also slide into your cold shoe mount on your camera. The top is a power button. We'll turn that on. You press and hold it for three seconds. Comes right on. Okay, on the bottom, the gain button, if you press it, you'll see the graph on the bottom. You have full gain, low gain, and medium gain. And with the power button, if you hold it down for about a second, you'll see that sun symbol on the light. There's a little white dot that appears and disappears. That allows the display to turn off automatically after a set period of time. On the transmitter, you have the power button on the bottom opposite to the power button location on the receiver. You have a light for when you are paired, a light for the battery, the built-in microphone, the built-in microphone is recessed and it has a little lip on there to keep it from getting scruffing sounds introduced. Then of course you have the input for the microphone. Now we'll go ahead and turn on the transmitter. Looking at the receiver display, press the power button. It takes about three seconds to come on. It's on and you can see there's a peak indicator bar and colors to show when you may be introducing distortion. And at the top of the display, you see the battery level for both the receiver and the transmitter, which is a great feature. All right, so let's take a quick look at connecting a microphone to the transmitter. So with my lavalier mic, it actually has a TRRS plug. So I needed an adapter from TRRS to TRS. Plug that into the transmitter and you're set there. Now you can power up both the transmitter and the receiver while it's in use. I have a power bank hooked up. And if you look in the top left of the display there, you'll see a tiny lightning symbol indicating that it is being charged. And on the transmitter, the power indicator light flashes on and off to indicate it is being charged. This is a sound test of the built-in mic. This is a sound test of the built-in mic. Sound test. Sound test. This is a sound test of a lab mic connected directly to the camera. This is a sound test of a lab mic directly connected to the camera. This is a sound test of an external lab mic connected to the road transmitter. Sound test. Sound test. I am standing at the goal line. The receiver is set up on the opposite goal line, so we're talking about a 100 yard range, and I think you could hear me loud and clearly here. So now I'm gonna do a signal obstruction test, and by that I mean I'm gonna face away from the camera and have my body in between the transmitter and the receiver on the camera. I'm also gonna be playing some white noise so you could hear the dropouts better. Okay, I'm at the two yard line, walking away, three yard line, 
four yard line, five yard line, six yard line, seven yard line, eight yard line, nine yard line, ten yard line, here, ten yard line. Sound check, sound check. Eleven yard line, twelve yard line. 14 yard line, 14 yard line, 15 yard line. Sound check, sound check. All right, so you should have heard a dropout maybe at the 10 yard line, and now we're connected back, so you should hear me just fine now. I'll go ahead and walk back here, and of course, we'll have a clear signal. All right, guys, so I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about two of the tests related to the range test and the obstruction test. With the range test, I had rock solid connection, no dropouts, all the way out to 100 yards and probably a little bit further. The key factor here is that I had clear line of sight, so nothing obstructing between the transmitter and the receiver. With the obstruction test, the results were rather disappointing. I had dropouts that were first occurring as soon as six feet away, although some tests I was able to have a solid connection as far as 30 feet away. Now all these tests that I ran were based on two brand new systems and for the obstruction test I actually did that over 10 times just because I couldn't really believe that I was having those dropouts in such a short distance, but the results were as I just mentioned. All right, guys, so that is it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, appreciate you hitting that like button. And as always, happy filming.